Hey, what is up everybody? This is Jason with devshopes.com and in this video, we're gonna cover just a few ways that you can compile SAS, all right? So the first method that I wanna go over is using the terminal. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the terminal here. So we can compile SAS one of two ways using the terminal. We can do it the manual way, which we would simply uh, type out SAS and then the name of our SAS file and then what we want to output it to. And we'll just do app.css. So this is a manual way of compiling SAS. Now this isn't gonna work. I don't have a project open. This is just at the root level of my, of my terminal here. But to compile SAS manually, you would simply do SAS, the name of the input file, and then the name of the output file. All right? Now, if we wanted to actually watch changes happen, uh, in our SAS file and auto compile for us, we would simply do that by adding the dash, 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 watch, and then the name of the input file. So we'll do app.sass, and then a colon, and then on the other side of that, the file we want it to compile into. And we'll do the app.css. So doing this, it sets up a watcher on that specific file, the app.sass, and anytime there's changes inside that specific file, it's going to pump out some CSS into the app.css file. All right. Now, what, what happens if we have folders uh, containing uh, different style sheets? Sometimes it's a really good practice to separate our SAS or our CSS into different folders or files to help organize things. Now, another way that we can compile SAS is using a third party app. All right. So for an example, um, I just uh, Googled um, SAS compiling tools and I found this uh, web website right here, austraining.com. Uh, and these are the top 10 compiling tools for less and SAS. So if we uh, drop down here, uh, number one, really popular one, I've seen a lot of people use this, is CodeKit. All right, so it tells you what it supports and how much it is and the platform, all right, that it's on. Then you got prepros. Uh, it's got a price to it. It compiles SAS. That's great. Uh, mixture is 39. It compiles SAS. That's fantastic. Uh, there's a live reload. Uh, Koala is a really good one. This one's free. All right. And it compiles uh, SAS, Less, and Compass, which is awesome. And it's available for Mac and Windows, which is cool. And then another free one. Um, I'm surprised it's down here at the bottom. It's called Winless. Uh, this one's free. And then the more popular free one that I'm familiar with is Simplest. And this one's cool. It says Simplest, as the name suggests, is the simplest tool for compiling less files. And obviously it says here that it supports SAS as well. All right. And with these third party apps, uh, go ahead. And when you go to the website to download it, make sure you read the documentation about how to use it. In most of these cases, all you're doing is taking your SAS file, uh, from your project and you drag and drop it into this application and it's going to do an auto watch for you. But every one of these is going to work a little bit differently so be sure to uh, read the documentation how to use it. Now the third way to compile SAS that I wanted to cover is using packages that are available with your text editor. So for an example I'm using Atom. Uh, there's other text editors like Brackets or Visual Studio. So I'm going to be demoing Atom and how to find these additional packages. So in Atom, I'm going to go click on the Atom drop down here. I'm going to go to Preferences. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Packages. All right. And then I'm going to do a search. And when we're doing a search for packages like this, think to yourself, well, what is it I'm really trying to search for? Well, when we set up a watcher on Terminal, it auto compiles our SAS. When we use a third party app and put our SAS file in it, it auto compiles our SAS. So why don't we search for an auto compiler? <laughs> are, are you following? Auto compile. All right. And I don't want to be in packages. I apologize. I want to be in uh, installs. So auto compile. And it's going to do a search for this. And if we go through here, check this out. The second one is SAS auto compile. And then we've got one for less. Um, let's look down here a little more. We've got another one for SAS. And what I like to look out for on these packages is how many downloads there are. So this one has 5,800. The one that we saw up here has 
over 67,000. So just because this one has more downloads, I'm probably gonna go with this one. Now, before you click install, um, it's always important to read kind of the documentation or the usage of this. So don't go just installing tons of packages without really knowing how to use them. Click on this first. And it says here in the README that the requirements, it needs Node.js and Node SAS. Well, Node SAS is new to me. I actually haven't heard of that before. Um, I've got Node already on my machine, um, but this package needs Node SAS. And it says to do that, uh, simply use the npm install node-sas. And then uh, you can come down here and read the rest of the documentation of exactly what this, what this package can do. And if you want to install it, go ahead and click the install button. And this one, this is going to work on an autosave. So whenever you're in a SAS file and you hit save, this autocompiler here is going to work behind the scenes and autocompile that SAS for you. I'm not going to install this one. I personally, I just like using the terminal, you know, the, the, the coder way of doing it. Um, but you're more than welcome to install these packages. All right. And that really covers everything now. So we've been through three different ways that you can compile SAS using the terminal, some third party apps, or finding some uh, additional packages or extensions for your text editor. Let's move on.